Story 1. She had fallen off the wagon and was drinking a lot, to the point where it was affecting her memory. We kept doing the same lecture on density in 6th grade science for a month, until one of my classmates decided to ask another teacher about it. From there, she went to rehab. If anyone wants more context, she was our homeroom and science teacher. She was very nice and married to our assistant principal, so she had a little bit more leeway. While she was able to remain sober for a while, she eventually passed away due to the effects of her addiction a few years after this. She never seemed like a bad teacher, but she was always stressed to the absolute max. Always felt like she was working from behind and generally struggling to keep up. You know, the traditional tail end of the functioning addict lifestyle. Story 2. This one is actually sort of rather sad. Had an amazing but eccentric math teacher who was incredibly involved with helping students. He made sure to always cover his bases, so there was nothing really creepy about him. The year I left high school, was a senior at this time, went on to finish my GED. He was fired. Shortly after, we had found out that he had killed himself with a self-inflicted gunshot. What had happened during this period of time was, a student had come forward to the administration and had accused him of misconduct, both of them being males. And unfortunately, there was no real way to prove a negative for the missing time outside of school hours. So they promptly let him go. Being a gay, black teacher in South Texas? Rough. He wrote a letter basically denying all the accusations, but had come to the grim realization that, at his age, his career was effectively over, so he shot himself in the head. Later, the student who made the accusations came forward and said he had fabricated the entire event because he was failing his grades and angry. The whole event was quietly swept under the rug. Rip, Mr. Ethan. You were a good person who was cut down by other selfishness. Story 3. Our new band teacher was a young guy, fresh out of college. His first year teaching, and he embezzled about $1,000 from the band's funds. He got arrested, and his possible future career was ruined for a thousand bucks. Probably my favorite part of the story was that he went by the name Mr. E. So once he was gone, the ruthless band kids referred to him as Mr. Embezzlement. I had a teacher with a gambling addiction claim thousands of dollars collected under his care was lost. School never reported it and protected him because he was close to retirement. Story 4 our beloved teacher, Mr. Mon, had worked there for 29 years without incident and was one of the best teachers there. His classroom was always a laughing riot. He was the best roaster and encouraged us to roast him properly. He never failed to get us motivated, and a lot of us owe our career inspiration to him. He was fired because he had jokingly smacked a student on the back of his head for making a stupid comment. It was like something out of a sitcom, and all of us expected it and loved it. Yet one student, who was new at the school, was culture-shocked by this. He thought it was strange but hilarious. He told his mom offhandedly, and his mom became Karen. Never mind that the student was the teacher's godson, no physical contact was allowed, says Karen. He was suspended with pay for three months pending investigation, then was let go because Karen twisted the story and blew it up around the school. A year later, the teacher won both the lawsuit against the school and libel case against Karen with her son being one of the key witnesses. We still keep in contact and roast him for getting rich over smacking kids around. Story 5. Geeky AV teacher that everyone loved. Knew he was a geek and owned it. Caught in a predator sting trying to solicit underage girls. The kicker was that when a spring school levy was coming up, local police conspired with the school district to hide the charges for three weeks until the levy was passed. Someone substituted his class for three weeks. Everyone was both devastated and angry. The district ended the school year early. Story 6. He was a wonderful, friendly, and handsome teacher. This girl had a crush. Some told the teacher about this girl's crush. The teacher felt awkward and avoided her eyes from then on. Girl got hurt, complained to the principal that he was being creepy with her. All the heads, which included my father, were called for a meeting with him. He got sick of defending himself, shouted, F you, and left the school. They fired him before he could hand out his resignation. To clarify some things, it was one of the best schools, and all the rich kids studied there. I studied because my father was a faculty. Otherwise, we don't have so much money, 
and hence teachers were dealt with very harshly. On one occasion, a teacher was fired only because it seemed on the cameras that he hit a boy hard. The parents complained, and he was fired the next day, without listening to him at all. My father knew that he just patted him, but the kid was spoiled, and he lied. Also, the teacher was a junior one. Nothing happened to the girls. Our IC might have talked to them about it, but I don't know about that. They graduated fine. No problem. I got to know about this incident later. When I was there, I just knew that he knew she had a crush on him and that he left one day. I mentioned my father so that you'll know how I know what happened in the meeting. He just knew that a girl had complained, and now they're called. Also, the teacher we are talking about was every student's favorite. So other teachers were jealous, and they all assumed that he was very lenient and encouraged us to not follow other teachers and stuff. So it might have made it hard for him to say he always stayed professional. Story 7 my sociology teacher in high school was fired for throwing a chalkboard eraser at a sleeping student's head. He was a great teacher and always did this in good humor. Obviously not a great idea in retrospect, but we all knew that we could get away with sleeping in his class if we didn't mind getting an eraser upside the head if he noticed. I heard he was fired a few years after I graduated high school, and that kind of bummed me out. Probably deserving of a reprimand of some sort, but not getting fired. It's not like he was an offender or guitar player. Story 8. My AP chem teacher had an affair with the principal. Principal got fired too. I felt bad for her. They didn't do anything on school property, and it didn't impact her performance in the classroom. Also, the school wasn't able to find a qualified teacher to replace her halfway throughout the year, so we were all screwed. Not one of us passed that AP test. Story 9. He was playing his guitar for students at my elementary school. He had been warned before, but the kids enjoyed it, so he continued to play it for them anyways. One day, the assistant principal was lurking in the hallway and wandered into his classroom. She saw him playing his guitar and fired him on the spot. A whole lot of students were crying that day because he was an amazing guy. This took place in a small rural town in Georgia back in the early 2000s. He wasn't the music teacher. He just used to bring his guitar and play songs randomly on some days, and the kids enjoyed it. He'd been warned multiple times by his higher-ups. Why? I don't know. He was a great teacher. He thought that before the break, he could play something for us one last time during the last week of school. It just happened to be the worst possible timing while the assistant principal was walking around the halls. He didn't come back to teach at our school when classes resumed again. If I recall, he got a job teaching at a different school. Story 10. He got arrested driving through Nevada over the summer with five pounds of weed in his car that he'd bought in California. He had no intention of telling the district, and we only found out because a news reporter from the town he was arrested in contacted our superintendent for a quote on the matter. He was let go immediately. Story 11. A co-worker got fired two weeks into the new semester. When, instead of uploading a video related to his subject, he instead accidentally continued a previously paused adult video on the big interactive screen. The computer he was using was slow and too, so he couldn't quickly exit the video. It went on for a good 30 seconds before someone pulled the plug on the screen. Around the same time, he lobbed the laptop about 30 feet across the class. Yikes, this one's so horrible, but also so plausibly completely accidental. I definitely believe it was accidental to show it, but why on earth was he watching while at his job teaching children? That's the part where this should have been completely avoided. Instead, it would have been much less a problem if it was, say, a video on why the Star Wars prequels are the worst or something else safe for work. Story 12. Our principal was escorted out by two police. Come to find out it was because he was caught committing fraud. He would assign students to classes without telling them to make it seem there were more kids in, let's say, the art department, so that the department would receive more funding from the government to continue. He meant well, but students caught on when we moved to college, and transcripts from high school had a whole page of Fs or withdrawals. It really messed us up. About two weeks later, he hung himself, left behind a wife and kids. It really hit me hard because I almost dropped out of high school after two of my friends committed suicide. He was the one that got me counseling, helped me graduate, and encouraged me to go to college. I would not be here if it weren't for him.
It just really hurt to know that while he was helping me accomplish that, he did the same thing only a month or two later. We planted trees for him to remember him by. Rip, Mr. Woodcroft. You meant well. Story 13. Wasn't a teacher, but our vice principal. Essentially, our principal bumped her twin niece's class ranks up to valedictorian and salutatorian. The vice principal, one of the nicest guys I've ever met and a truly amazing guy, did what was right and confronted the school board and told them that this was unfair to those who actually earned those ranks. Those twins were some of the most average people I have ever encountered in my life, and they didn't work nearly as hard as the other candidates for the spot. It doesn't help that everyone on the school board, including the superintendent, was related to the principal. Thus, our heroic vice principal was fired, and it was a shock to the whole school. They tried covering it up by saying he didn't have the proper documentation or education to be in his position. Though if that was the case, I'm not sure why they would even hire him and let him stay for the first two years of my high school career. Everyone knew it was a sham, and the local news actually got involved when I called them during lunch. That next football game, NBC showed up, and there was almost a protest outside of the local library. I printed out almost a hundred flyers that read, What are you going to do, fire me? Save Lightfoot. The entire school was pissed, and the twins' ranks were promptly demoted back to 21st and 22nd in our class. Though not until the next school year. Story 14. Teachers at my high school got fired on a pretty regular basis. The principal was a narcissist. But here's one of the rare ones we actually heard about. The school went into lockdown because someone was seen hopping over the fence onto campus at the start of the school day. Freshman geography teacher locked his door, didn't control his class, wouldn't let one of the students back in, and jumped at every sound he heard. For comparison, the sub and senior lit next door didn't have a key to lock the door, but grabbed the handle, got on the floor, and planted both his feet on the frame so that the door couldn't be opened. I think the dude was a linebacker for football, too. Story 15. She wasn't enforcing detention, letting students leave early, or just signing their name for them. She was also the mom of a student. They fired her, and all the students that regularly received detention rioted. Jumping on cars, flipping trash cans, they set one on fire, and pulling the fire alarm seven times in a day. I forget how it was quelled, but it only lasted a day. Story 16. She was in an adult magazine. At least one. Rumor was multiple, and maybe even a few tapes. This was right at the start of the internet, so acquiring things wasn't as easy. But someone did eventually find at least one magazine with a whole section about her. So yeah, it was passed around the school, and she was fired that same day. Also, some pretty heavy rumors she was hooking up with some students, but the videos were always way too grainy to say it was her. One of the art teachers at my high school was a Playboy model when she was younger. But we're in Germany, and apparently Germany is quite relaxed with those things. At least it was 20 years ago. So everyone knew. Everyone saw the pics. Everyone was cool with it. Story 17. They found out his diploma was a forgery. He never attended or graduated from any college to be able to teach. No one was surprised, because he didn't last a year, and he didn't even attempt a lesson plan. So it was only a matter of time. No idea what he was thinking would happen. Story 18. In grade 10 or 11, we had an English teacher get fired for showing an inappropriate movie. The movie, I think it was Once We Were Warriors, was approved by the school. The teacher sent home a note to all the parents for his class, asking permission and detailing what was in the movie. Violence, drug use, and assault, and why he had chosen it. One girl, whose parents had signed the permission slip and decided to watch the movie with the class, the teacher asked if anyone would like to leave, got about halfway through the movie before leaving in hysterics and complaining to the office that the teacher had behaved inappropriately by showing the movie to a class of 15 to 16 year olds. Poor guy did everything right, got approved and parental permission, and still got fired. Story 19 Halfway through the school year, my high school manufacturing teacher was talking badly about his wife. Apparently, he was kicked out of the house and stayed at a friend's place. I'm 100% sure he showed up hungover and or high for the rest of the year. He teaches manufacturing, so kids are using saws, and he's in his office with his head down taking a nap. He's also a veteran, and he would get very irritated some days and blow up. 
he would blame it on Agent Orange, yet he was like early 40s at the time. Anyways, he's still talking smack about his wife. He asked students to help him move stuff out of his house and also mentioned, If you, uh, you know, accidentally knock my wife down the stairs, that's okay. One morning, the cops come in and arrest him for domestic violence. The class didn't have a teacher for the rest of the day. Story 20. In high school, our carpentry woodworking teacher was fired. One morning when we came into his class, he took us all out back and opened up his van. Inside was a dead deer that he insisted he was going to turn into beef jerky and sell some other cuts to students. He then asked some students to drag this carcass through the entire woodshop class, which was like three regular classrooms combined, and then hung it on a hook in a closet next to his office. Next day, we had a new teacher, and nobody got deer jerky. Story 21. Not just that teacher, but the principal. He'd gotten wind that he might be fired because of a less-than-ideal job performance. So he decided to drum up sympathy by stabbing himself in the men's room and blaming it on a student. Said student was arrested, but the police were immediately suspicious of his story when they noticed his shirt was unharmed. In other words, whoever stabbed him courteously lifted up his shirt beforehand so as not to tear a hole in it. He wound up being forced to resign, in addition to getting probation and a heavy fine. Story 22 I was hired as a substitute teacher for an indefinite term at a private high school. Turns out the actual teacher just up and left the country with one day's notice to the admin. He didn't say how long he would be gone, nor was his absence approved. After being gone for three weeks, he unexpectedly showed up to work and planned to pick up the lesson plans where he left off as if he was never gone. The school admin had me, a substitute, continue teaching his classes while he graded papers in the back. It was incredibly awkward for me, but especially the students, who didn't understand what was going on. The following day, he was fired when he arrived at work and asked to leave the campus. The school gave me an interview and hired me full-time in his place. As this was the height of the recession and jobs were very hard to come by, I was very grateful to have a full-time job. I will never understand why that guy would walk out on an okay job during that time and then just expect everyone to be okay with him doing that. Some people truly are on a different wavelength. Story 23. Woodwork metalwork teacher at my school seemed like a cool guy. A bit weird, but nice enough. One day we had a bomb scare, and the school was sent to the Oval for the bomb squad to search through the school. It was quickly determined that the woodworking teacher called in the threat. Muppet used his own phone. After what seemed like a few hours of us sitting on the oval, couldn't give you an exact time frame, a group of cops started swiftly moving all the kids out the back oval into the nearby bushland, along a creek and out into a nearby park. Turns out they were searching his house. Not long after they arrested him, they found plans to plant bombs under the oval and call in a threat. No bombs were found. Everyone speculated that he was doing a trial run and taking note of where the kids were all sitting on the oval. Pretty sure he was fired. Story 24. Older male teacher in his late 40s. All us guys really loved him because he was one of the boys and really funny. Then it came out that he was using his access to get the home phone numbers of female students, calling them up in the middle of the night, acting like a creeper, and then hanging up. This was when caller ID first became a thing. One girl's parents got scared of this random guy calling, paid for the service, got a number and a name, went to the school, and the teacher was fired. All us guys were shocked that he would even do such a thing. I polled some girls I knew, and not one was shocked, because none of them found his antics amusing. I think that was the first time I realized how differently we all experienced the world. Story 1. He wanted to date a teacher, and she turned him down, so he suspected that she was sleeping with a student. He then hired a private investigator and had her followed. She found out about it, went to the cops, requested a restraining order, and he was brought up on stalking charges. He was fired. I don't recall her facing any sort of discipline. It was the 17-year-old star basketball player. It all started because he was bragging. The rumors of her dating a student started well before the teacher started pursuing her. The rejected teacher hired a private investigator because he heard the rumor mill. 
Most people in the school thought the two teachers were dating because the male teacher was always in her classroom, even during class hours. He would buy her flowers often. She was the cheerleader's coach, and he was always sitting in on her practices after school. The male teacher abruptly stopped going to her class and going around her. The private investigator and stalking accusations came two months after that. Everyone figured he had her followed after he was rejected. Story 2. He was a gym teacher for over 30 years. He volunteered to stand near the trash cans during lunch every day to ensure students dumped their food and gave their finished trays to the cafeteria workers in an organized way. He had done this for decades, even when my father attended that junior high. One day, a student decided to toss her entire tray in the trash instead of dumping the contents and giving it to the cafeteria worker. He removed the tray from the trash and gave it back to her. She threw a carton of chocolate milk at his face, close range. He responded by punching her in the eye. I was expecting the twist to be that he was eating any leftover lunches that were thrown away for 30 plus years, lol. Story 3. Embezzled something like 20000 from the field trips she was in charge of scheduling for the whole school. All field trips that needed to be paid for she planned and took the money for. Overcharged the students but only deposited the amounts for what the trip cost and kept the rest. Did it for decades and stole about $20,000 over time. Not only fired but charged and found guilty. Not sure how much time she was given, compared to all the other students on this thread. Some good old-fashioned financial crime seems positively wholesome. Story 4. Because he set up a camera in the middle school theater changing room, girl side. His dumbass was at the beginning of the video. Turning the camera on and adjusting a modified shoebox, he put over it to hide it. A student found it and took it home, watched it with parents. Goodbye, Mr. Goebel. Story 5. History teacher never really taught history. Sometimes he just yelled at the kids in class. It got worse when his son died in a desert storm. Then he spent half the class time crying. Assistant principal had to take over one too many times. Eventually, he stopped coming to school, and we never saw him again. The most awesome teacher I ever had was a history teacher, but totally awkward. He was sadly a drunk, but a funny one and a great storyteller, the type that would wave a broomstick pretending he was in battle. One of his weird habits during all these awesome stories is he would be eating the chalk, just casually nibble from it out of his fist as if it were peanuts. There were situations, and I don't make this up, that he wanted to write something on the blackboard only to realize he ate all the chalk! Ha ha! Story 6. He was actually just a substitute. Left quicker than he arrived. He told our class he practices judo, so one student told him to show a move. The move he chose to demonstrate on a student in front of the class was a sleeper hold. Put that mother ducker right to sleep and got charged with assaulting a minor. This sounds like something that would happen in a comedy. I can just picture the sub hopping through the classroom window and hauling ass to his car from there. Story 7. Gave a student written confirmation of the zero tolerance policy, highlighting that any two students involved in a fight would get the same punishment. Next time the kid got bullied, he effing tore into the bully and started pounding him in the head with a trash bin lid. The written confirmation got used to successfully demand that both students suffered the same consequences, especially after the student showed he had received confirmation that he wouldn't be punished more severely for fighting back. From that point, can I get that in writing was basically a get out of jail free card. Story 8. This happened in Germany where teachers are tenured, so it is really effing hard to get fired as a teacher, but she still managed to achieve that. Well, Miss M was a failed artist and an art teacher. She predicted her own non-existent success onto her students and had them participate in art contests non-stop. We hated those because we really didn't want our creativity to be exploited for the personal self-worth of a psychopathic witch with a drinking problem, so we started a little resistance. We had our parents apply pressure at parent-teacher conferences to stop her from doing the contest, and at the same time, Plain refused to have our work sent in. It devolved quickly. She didn't take it well. One day, she was in a particularly bad mood and on some nonsensical rant about whatever when a different art teacher knocked on the door and requested that his classmate pass through her room to his room because his room's door lock was broken. Q25 students shuffling through the classroom in awkward silence while Miss M offloaded her frustrations on the other teacher who ignored her and left for his room. A couple minutes later, he stuck his head back through the door and requested to have another chair because he didn't have enough for his class. Miss M completely lost the tiny bit of sanity she had left and physically attacked him with a chair, like full-on hitting him with the thing while screaming unintelligibly about him disturbing her precious teachings. He fled through her classroom because, you remember, his door was broken. 
and went straight to the headmaster who came in and put her disciplinary leave in front of the whole class. She was never seen again. Story 9. My dad subbed for a while after he retired. He got personally escorted out of a school for once doing black magic for fifth graders. He did a car trick, and he was in the process of cutting a sheet of paper in a way that makes it possible to walk through it. He is currently banned for life from Deer Park Public Schools in Washington. Story 10. Not my school, but the school he went after mine. He was hired as a soccer coach, I believe, and somehow ended up coaching cheerleaders. He ended up having a relationship with a 14-year-old student. The girl wrote about it in her diary. Her mom read it, called the cops, and they had the girl invite him over for s He knocked on the door, and they jumped out and arrested him. This was 20-ish years ago. I think he is out now. Story 11. All his classes were failing. He spoke unintelligible, didn't explain anything well, and if anyone asked a question, he'd respond with, Mmm, ask someone else who does know. As if we ever wanted to ask him anything unless the entire class didn't understand. This was my old chemistry teacher. He was fired halfway through the year. We then didn't have any chemistry classes for a while. The other chemistry teacher couldn't take over all the vacant hours, but she gave us a three-week crash course at the end of the year. I learned more in those three weeks than I did in the first six months with the fired guy. Story 12. He showed us Pulp Fiction in history class and forgot to take out the tape when returning the AV equipment. Story 13. An ex grew up in a tiny, nowhere town in Wyoming. One day they got a long lunch break, and their teacher was walking out to a car with some people in suits and military clothes. It turns out he switched dog tags with someone killed in Vietnam, and the dead soldier's parents went to the military when their son didn't call or visit. He had hidden in one of the most isolated places in the U.S., and it took enough time for him to finish a degree and get a job. Story 14. He was a great teacher. But it turns out there was a reason as to why he always closed his laptop when we walked by. He was watching adult videos. In the 6th grade classroom on the school Wi-Fi! Story 15. She almost got fired for that, but somehow she stayed. She got pregnant with one of her students on prom night and found out after his graduation. The funniest part is, she was a s ed teacher. Story 16. Had a samurai sword in his trunk proceeded to unsheath it during a fire drill because his lineup location was next to his car and show people. The best part was that after he got fired, people posted flyers around the school of him photoshopped with a samurai outfit with a caption of FREE MY HOMIE SAMURAI SO AND SO. Story 17. He was asked to resign because he was engaged to one of the other teachers. They're still happily married and he made more money as a carpenter. Great guy. Story 18. They posted a QR code for the Boston Public Library so that kids could get access to banned books. Not exactly fired, but written up for discipline and eventually during the process left the school. Story 19. Dude was a social studies teacher. He was also the girl's swim team coach. One day in class, he connected his computer to the projector, but he clicked the wrong file and instead of whatever video he intended to show, the class, a video of the girl's swim team using the school's showers was presented instead. There was a girl from the swim team in the class when it happened. Dude got canned and taken out of the school by the local PD. Story 20. She full-bodied a student on the wall and started yelling at him because he wasn't sitting still and respecting our 5th grade practice graduation ceremony. She was 6'2 and heavy set. He was frail. You can imagine how that went. She was a love teacher though, so she got hired back as a hall monitor. Story 21. Called a black kid a cotton picker. He was a science teacher, and we were using cotton balls in a science experiment. I'm unsure of what he thought the outcome of this comment could have been, other than immediate termination. Story 22. For being a shizzy person, and an even worse teacher. She was a complete a-hole to students and parents, and she was even worse to the other members of the faculty. My mom was also a teacher at the school, and she told me horror stories about this woman. She would confront other staff and verbally and belittle middle school aged kids in front of other students. She even cursed out the other teachers in a staff meeting when they confronted her about her behavior. She was walked out by the vice principal in front of everyone in the cafeteria. The entire student body applauded. Story 23. She got angry with a student. Dude was an a-hole and would disrespect her daily. So she said he was a witless brat that only passed each year because his father was a corrupt lawyer that paid the school so he didn't fail every subject. She was right and everyone knew it. She got fired a week later. Story 24. She had a 78% failing rate out of all her biology classes. The class was broken off into two days, and one day you'd spend all day in class learning, and the next day you'd spend time in the lab to learn the experiments. 
The problem with the system is we take a test, fail, and when we went to our lab, we would learn everything we needed to know for the test we had just failed. As a class, we came over to her and explained to her what was going on, and she caught attitudes with us every time. The worst part is, instead of stepping up and trying to help us to find a solution, she'd hit us with the, when I was in school, no one helped me, and followed that up with telling us to just read our textbook. At one point, there was homework that was supposed to be assigned, and when she asked for it, we got confused. Turns out she never posted it for us to do so, so when we told her that, she blamed us and told us we should have said something to her about the homework not being posted. The class I was in ended up having 25 out of 27 people failing the class, with the remaining people barely passing. I gave her a review, and what I didn't know at the time was not only did my entire class leave a bad review with their own stories, but her other two classes also left bad reviews. She was fired the last day of classes. Story 25. She dared a troublemaker to hit her. He said I don't hit people with glasses. She took them off. He backed down. She said, that's what I thought. He was disruptive and just an a-hole. She backed him down. Even 20 plus years later, I think she handled it perfectly. The school board disagreed and she got fired. Story 26. She was going through a divorce. In hindsight, I guess it was a bit harsh for the school to fire her because of it, but she kind of stopped giving us classes and just spent her time unloading all her marital problems on a bunch of 13-year-olds. Story 27. That teacher was my stepdad. He got fired for being physically abusive to his students. Good for the students. Bad for me and my siblings who could not just fire him. As a side note, the only place he could get a job after that was on a reservation. He started pulling that shiz with those students, and there was no long, drawn-out firing process. They just vandalized our house and trashed the car. Done and done. I admired the F out of those res kids. Story 28. Some students made allegations that the teacher had assaulted them. Teacher got fired and career ruined. It later came out that the student account was completely false, and several students knew the kid intended to lie because he didn't like the teacher. The kid even made a false police report at some point during the whole fiasco. Everything came out later, but the dude's life was already ruined. This happened with my old AutoCAD teacher. A girl claimed he was sleeping with her, and had gotten her pregnant. It went all the way to court because she was underage. Turns out she wasn't pregnant. She had never slept with him. I didn't like him because he was fond of jump-scaring students who were goofing off instead of working. The allegations broke up his marriage and ended his career. I don't know where he is now, since he, more or less, fell off the grid. As for the girl, she's a Karen now, and her Facebook account confirms she's in an MLM. She's known for ending one of the most popular electives my old school ever had that wasn't sports or music. Story 29. My history teacher's son had an illness. I'm not sure what, but it was terminal. He needed more time off to be with him and his family. Apparently, he had used his allotted vacation and sick time up already, and the school board wouldn't approve anymore. So he just left. Can no longer be employed in the district because of it, I heard. Everybody loved him, too. One of the few teachers who really cared about his job and his students. The lady they brought in to replace him did absolutely nothing wrong, but nobody could truly replace him. The whole class dropped about five points in grade because of it. I missed him a lot because he was one of the few teachers I ever tried to really impress. Story 30. Burned an American flag in the classroom to illustrate free speech. She was an English arts teacher. Aside from the groups of people that would be upset by that, she also straight up lit a fire in the classroom. Story 31. Not someone who got fired, but someone who definitely should have. Our homeroom ed teacher was restocking our ingredients and forced students to eat rotten food. I'm not talking about slightly expired food. She made us scrape off the completely black layer of carrots before eating them, and forced people to just cut the mold off from the potatoes. No one believed us until we got picture proof and the school didn't start talking to her until we threatened to call the Food Safety Bureau in my country. She stopped forcing us to eat expired food, but she still works there to this day. Story 32. Biology teacher was fired when the principal saw how a student yelled and threw a test in the teacher's face. The teacher already had some clashes with school authorities, so they used that situation to fire her because she didn't show authority over the students. A few years later, I entered a bakery store and there was my old teacher. She was the owner of the store, happy, and her employees spoke very well about her. 
Story 33. My high school principal was fired for hypnotizing students. He would do it at school functions and stuff. Everyone knew and was cool with it. He hypnotized a bunch of seniors in my class after graduation. The funniest thing I've ever seen. This isn't going where you think it's going, though, because he wasn't trying to bang high school girls. It was found out he was hypnotizing the football team before games to be better. Not that it worked. They were always bad, and probably still are bad. But that was discovered as cheating, and he was fired for it. Story 34. Turns out he didn't actually have the credentials to teach high school English. People were pissed because the boys' basketball team was doing really well and he could no longer coach. Also, the girls' soccer coach married one of his players a few years after she graduated. Probably still coaching, though, lol. Story 35. Yelled at a student that she wasn't ever going to graduate because she was so stupid. Added that he would be glad to see her in a couple of years when he would need to change the oil in his car. What an ass. Story 36. He kicked the volleyball out of anger and it bounced off a girl's face doing some damage. He was already on thin ice though, after doing something that really should have got him fired immediately. He shot a student's dog in retaliation after the student's dog killed his dog. The student and the teacher lived in the same neighborhood and both dogs were loose at the time the teacher's dog was originally killed. The big problem was that the dog that was shot was on a leash and being walked by the kid at the time. This was in the early 90s in South Texas. Story 37. There was this awesome teacher, Mr. V. He was witty, funny, cared for his students dearly. His lessons were always captivating and interesting. The most boring topics come to life, and made you a participant and gave a genuine vested interest. There was another teacher, Mrs. Juggs. She was very attractive, blonde, perfect hourglass figure, and very well kept. At the staff Christmas party, Mr. V, who was unsurprisingly well liked by all the other staff, asked Mrs. Juggs to get some more drinks. Not sure if it was punch or alcohol. She obliged. She came back holding two drinks in her hands in very festive cups. Mr. V, nice cups. Thanks for the drink. Mrs. Juggs, excuse me? What? Mr. V, the cups, they're nicely decorated. Better than the red ones. You filled them up nicely too. Thanks. Mrs. Juggs walks away. Next day, Mr. V has a harassment suit against him. He's an upset, married man of 25 years, faithful to his wife. He would always mention her or say how they spent their weekend together, etc. Ended up getting terminated after working at the same school for 15 years. Mrs. Juggs was there her first year.